Hello guys. So today we're going to be talking about we're going to talk about my guest who is transgendered and we are going to talk about her life as a transgender. Hey y'all. We come to learn some things today. How y'all doing on this 25th day of quarantine? I feel like all my days are trying to run together. You know, all the days feel like Saturday. They all feel the same. Um, I can't tell one one day from the other at this point. We all have a whole bunch of Saturdays. Right. And she's joining, joining. It's working. Yes, Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am good. And we are, I am so excited to have you on today, honey. <laughs> Listen, I was kind of nervous. I said, oh, Lord, I got to go live and answer these questions on live. Lord, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to get into some things right quick? Well, first of all, let me say, like, so I showed you the questions. So all the questions are going to be, you know, yeah. nothing crazy. There's real questions. And then if the audience members have questions, we can pick and choose the ones we want to answer. There's no guarantee we have to answer them. If they are like, Listen, I'm an open book. So I okay, don't so like, care. I don't I answer all those questions. Okay, because I don't want you to answer nothing <laughs> if you don't want to answer it. You know, if it's, it's, if it's too invasive, uh -huh. we're going to pass. It's fine with me. Okay, so I want you to first introduce yourself to the people who are <laughs> um, Okay, hi, everybody. My name is Chanel. I am 29 years old. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I'm a trans woman. Um, I don't know what else you want me to say. <laughs> so we're going to talk about, okay, so first I want to, everybody understand the definitions, okay? So terminology. So what is the difference between transgender, transsexual, and are they are they two and the same? Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry, a piece of hair on my face. Um, I'm a transgender woman, so I was biologically born male. Okay. I transitioned and um, transition is defined differently for a whole lot of people. It be the whole hormonal process. Some people believe the dressing and expression is just enough for them. It's, it's specific to each person. For me, I got on the hormones. I am going to have my surgeries. I want to fully be the woman that I am. Breast, bottom, everything. And I know I had some people had this question because mm -hmm. I, I have I have two cousins who are transgendered. They mm -hmm. are now transgender women. I have two cousins that are in my life, and so mm -hmm. like I, I know with them, people were asking and 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 tell me if this if you ever had this question like, well, why can't you just be gay, right? Like I, I had one cousin Ooh. who was <laughs> who was he was always flamboyant. He was always you know he always like you know wore girl clothes, wore makeup, you know, when he was a boy. Um, uh -huh. Then he transitioned transition into a woman. So the question was like, oh, why can't this be a gay boy? Like for you. So it's so crazy that you say that because when I first began my transition, my I told my sister, I was like, listen, I want to transition. You know, I'm not comfortable with that. This is what I'm and she just was like, well, why do you have to do that? Why can't you just be gay? Why can't you just dress up and then take it off? Why do you, why do you have to call yourself a girl? And I was just like, you don't get the choice to decide who I am and tell me who I'm going to be. The reason why I'm not just going to be a boy is because that's not who I am. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel safe in that place. I'm not living my truth and I'm not expressing myself how I am. So if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this the right way and I'm going to transition and be the woman that I am. So when did you first realize that you wanted to be a woman? I first realized that I wanted to be a woman when I was about, I was young though. I knew I was a girl. I knew I wasn't gay. Um, I had to be like probably six. Okay. Like around that age when you start realizing that you like boys and girls, I knew that I did not. I never had a girlfriend. I never wanted a girlfriend. Okay. And it was never attracted to women. But I also looked at women like, oh my God, they're beautiful. This is, that's, I, that's me. Like, I know that's me. Like, I'm not a boy. But my living conditions were, um, my parents are from the island, so it was never a situation where I was going to be able to transition at home. Right. That was not going to happen. 
I had to leave and do it on my own because my mama was like anti anything gay, trans. But then she right. started, she accepted the gay, but then it was just like, okay, this, I can accept the gay, but that's just still too much. Right. And I think, I think for a lot of black um, families, like I think uh, we black people have gotten to the point probably recently probably the, the, the last 20 years or so, that we are becoming more accepting of our our gay relatives. Yeah, no, it's, it's a lot different. It's a lot yeah. different. We are everywhere now. You can see it yeah. on TV, internet, YouTube. Everywhere. everywhere you can see a trans. There's a trans girl that you can see everywhere across the web. Right. <laughs> or down and the block. And I think, like, some of us, like, um, transgender, even though it's not new, because, you know, <laughs> There's always There's been always trans been people. Um, it's just not, I guess, not as been um, vocal or in the forefront as yeah. You know, it wasn't up in your face, as right? Now. And so I think a lot, lot of people have are trying. Are, it's new to them, so they're they're trying mm -hmm. to have trying to figure out how to navigate that feeling because it's a new thing. Like oh, you know, it's I, it's kind of like you know how being gay was forty years ago, fifty years ago, kind of mm -hmm. thing. So. You said your your mom and them really wasn't accepting at first. So how oh, was no. your, how was your um I like your friends when you told them? Um, so the thing was, I never when I was quote unquote gay, I never came out. I never had to come out because I was always super feminine. I was okay. always super feminine, super girly. So it wasn't something that I had to go and come out and say, okay, you guys were coming out the closet. It was like, okay, that you you did different from everyone else so it's fine now when I broke the news that I wanted to transition a lot of my people were like okay let's do it like you you want to transition that's it's fine with me it wasn't my friends and my close relatives like my friends are my family so okay. those are that's my tight-knit circle that those are my family members they were on board they're like okay I mean I my name has been Chanel so they were like, okay, Chanel, we already knew Chanel. We're just going to physically see Chanel now. That's okay. the only difference. So do you feel like people in your life, friends, family, um, uh, acquaintances, treat you differently after you um, made your transition or after you told them that you uh -huh. wanted to transition? I think a lot of people had to get adjusted that, you know, there's another woman around. Yes. I'm not just the gay friend who goes around and, you know, we go out and I'm out with the girls and it's just like, okay, that's just my gay cousin. That's just my gay friend. No, this is right. another girl in the group. Not only this is another girl in the group, this is another attractive girl in the group that men are attracted to too. So, you right. know, it's just that, the whole that's, dynamic. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big thing. Yeah, I can see it's that. Like, oh, now we're in the same bathroom. We doing the same things. We having the same conversations. We sharing the same clothes. Men are attracted to you like they're attracted to me. So it, for a lot of people, it was like, okay, well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, because in the beginning, one thing I would say for me, I did not know how my transition was going to go. I didn't know what I was going to look like. You don't know because. Before this, I had a whole. Ch I used to go to the barbershop. I had a chin strap. I had a. I used to get my hair cut. I was, you know, I looked like a a, a boy, boy. Okay. <laughs> so I wasn't sure how this was gonna go. And as I started to manifest and start to bloom, I think people around me start to really get adjusted, and then they start to see the woman that I am, and it was just like, okay, this is real. Like this is real. This is not a game. Like this isn't in a phase. This is right. something she's doing just because she's bored, or you know. This is her life. Right. And they, go ahead. Um, so did you have any, like, personal struggles? I, I remember when um, uh, uh, Caitlyn Jenner, mm -hmm. when Bruce became Caitlyn, and... Uh, I'm not prepared for Caitlyn, and I'll tell you why later, but I don't remember. Okay, okay. Uh, well, but for this example, I'm going to use her. <laughs> um, they had an interview. She had an interview with, uh, I can't remember, I think it was on 2020, some, somebody, Dateline somebody. She uh -huh. had an interview. And in that interview, they were talking about her personal struggle, struggles since she transitioned. Like, it was like a whole thing. Um, she was still having some, like, um, identity problems, like some self-esteem issues, stuff like that. She was still, it wasn't, 
I guess the road wasn't as rosy or mm -hmm. whatever as she had envisioned. So my question to you is, since your transition, ha how have you, have you had any struggles, some personal struggles? Oh, God. Ever since the beginning of my, the, the moment I was gay, when I made a decision to transition from gay to trans, because see, the thing about gay men is they still have the privilege of a man. They still, even though if some of them are, still get to utilize their privilege because okay. they're still men. Okay. When you transition and you leave that realm and now you're in womanhood, you don't get the same privileges anymore. You're put in the same group as every other woman and you must follow suit. So in the beginning, I was just like, why is this, why are men allowed to do this? Like, this is not okay. And the, the girls was like, listen, this Welcome to our world. <laughs> they were like, listen, this is how it is. And you know, this is, this is what it is. And I was just like, I don't, I don't like, I don't, what the fuck, what, what are you doing? Like, what, dealing with dudes who playing games and you still got to be that woman energy. You still got to be submissive. You still got to be that girlfriend. You still got to be all those things. And it's just right. like, what? <laughs> Welcome to our world, honey. <laughs> and, the biggest struggle Ooh. I had was when I left and I chose to transition, I, l I basically lost my parents. My mother and my father basically, I would say they didn't come out their mouth and disown me, but their actions basically showed me. You know, I had to learn how to do all this living on my own. I went from living in a home with my parents to living by myself, cooking, paying bills, doing everything by myself, dealing with my issues by myself okay. of course i got into therapy because that was mandatory if you're going to transition you, if you're going to do it the right way you get into therapy okay and my therapist who i love she walked me through this process my sisters who i love walked me through this process i didn't know how to buy a bra i was oh, in yeah. See, like I, that. okay that those simple things of buying bras buying panties like or putting on stockings properly so you don't rip them and like the basics. And truth be told, huh, this women who who were born women who don't buy the right bras, but go ahead. <laughs> so <laughs> I, and the most when I think about it, I think I bought my first bra. I was in Target and uh -huh. I went in there not to buy a bra. My mom was not talking to me. My and I didn't tell my sisters or nothing. I went in there and I'm standing in the bra section. I'm like, what size bra do I buy? Right. So I asked the lady, thankfully the lady who worked in that department was like, I'm going to help you. The sweetest angel ever. And she said, the bra strap, that's the size of your back. And she was really explaining to me these things. And I really understood that, that was a moment. Like I went in the dressing room and I cried because I was like, listen, I'm doing all this stuff by myself. Like I have a mom. My mom is not dead. Right. She's supposed to help me through my womanhood. Right. And she is, she neglected me. So for a long time, I I was very angry and bitter. Okay. And I can, I can see that too. Um, I think a lot of people, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, but I think some people probably, you know, mm -hmm. go through that and they feel alone in the process. Yeah. Um, it, it's very lonely. Yeah. I can see, I can see how that will, will be. So why don't you like Chris, uh, Caitlyn Jenner? Okay. So when I transitioned, I, I wasn't, first of all, I'm not a multimillionaire. And so when Caitlyn Jenner transitioned, she I, she, I, she barely took any hormones. It was like, okay, I'm gonna transition. I'm gonna go get my boobs done. I'm gonna get a few surgeries, and now I'm a woman. Womanhood ain't like that, baby. You gotta go through the you gotta go through the trenches, and you gotta really become the girl that you're supposed to be. You okay. can't just run and go get surgeries and say, boom, I'm a woman. Being a woman is not about just the physical. It's about how you carry yourself. It's about how you are when you in public and when you next to another man. And so I felt like when she just came out and it was awarding her for being a woman of the year, you just transitioned a few months ago. How are you woman of the year? That's good. And, and that might be why she had all these problems too. Black trans girls don't get that type of opportunity. Yeah, we got to go through the trenches. You got to figure out, I'm lucky to be employed full time in a studio, but a lot of my sisters are not in that situation. Right. They are their escort and trying to make a way, trying to figure it out. Right. So, you know, I, and it was, I just, I wasn't feeling it. I'm just like, okay, this is a bunch of white privilege bullshit. I don't. Well, 
before you know that, and you know, white privilege. <laughs> <laughs> I'm conversation. I'm good. Uh, so let's talk about dating life for a minute. I, I watched the Ooh. show. I used to watch the show. Um, that was on TLC uh, about jazz. I think the name of the show is. Oh yeah, she's younger than me though. He is. Yeah. So in that, well, the last one, of the last season I watched the show, she was in high school, mm -hmm. and she was dating some the, some little boy in her high school, and mm -hmm. she was having difficulties in her dating life because. The people in her town knew she was originally born a boy, mm -hmm. and and she was dating this little this little Caucasian boy. And his parents they weren't they weren't really all that cool with it because she was a boy at one time. So how has your dating life been? Um, do you tell people up front? Um, do how's that work? <laughs> oh, listen, it's funny that you say that because. My boyfriend and I, and I adore him tremendously, but we've been ripped in a little riff about that because it's hard for some men to be open and honest about who they are because of the scrutiny that they're going to walk into for being themselves. Especially black men. I agree. Black men. And it's just me looking on that, on their end, I'm just like, I understand. B. It's hard to come out and say that you like a trans woman or you are dating a trans woman because of, you don't know you, for one, are you going to lose family members? For two, are you going to lose your job? Because people make work for you so difficult. They're harassing you at work because of who you love. Like, what are the things you're going to have to go through? Are you going to lose lifelong friends that you have because they made a decision like, you know, I can't rock with you dating a trans. Like, I don't, they don't agree with it. So I understand that. But at the end of the day, you still have a right and you have a duty to be honest and be transparent and live your truth. Right. It's just for everybody. Dating hasn't been hard. Dating men hasn't been hard. It's just the things that come with dating since I am a trans girl. Okay. Such as I remember a situation where I I was dating a guy. He did something and you know the normal argument and I just was like, you mm -hmm. know, try to make it up to me for what you did and he was like well I want to come make it up to you and I was like we're not having sex I think you think that this was that how you gonna make it up to me we're not having sex I was like let's go out to dinner let's really talk about the issues that we're having oh I don't know about that we can do something else but I ain't taking you out to dinner because you know I'm not out that shit made me think into myself I was like I know I ain't no ugly ass girl like I know you ain't afraid to take me outside like I know I <laughs> you know I'll be a question in myself, like, wait, wait, wait a minute. He's not going to take me to dinner because I'm transgender. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, and those are the things, like, men creeping with you on the low. Men are, or they'll take you out, but they're not honest about who they are. You know, and then you got to, it's, you got to be careful because if things slip up, that could be your life on the line. Trans girls are getting killed. Kill. Thank yeah. God I haven't been through that situation. I was almost raped. Ooh. And I talk about it. I'm not ashamed of it. I was almost raped by somebody that I trusted and I knew. And, you know, those are the things that happen. It it comes, it, it, it's so sad, but it comes with the territory. The physical abuse, the verbal abuse, the leaving you in the shadows. They believe you're beautiful. I like you're beautiful. I want to be with you, but I don't know if I'm willing to step out there for the truth. Yeah, like you good, but I don't really know if I'm gonna do that with you. So do you, and so if you have a question, if you're watching, you can type your questions in the comments, and then we'll get to them. <laughs> so do you find so have you dated other people outside of your race? So like you, so okay, uh, if you have you listened to uh, okay because I got a. Uh, adjusted to no i heard about you through a podcast that i did and mm -hmm. she told me that you reached out so mm -hmm. one of the things i said on the podcast was 2019 was my hot girl year okay forget a hot girl summer i had a hot girl year <laughs> listen <laughs> um i've dated haitians i've been with hispanics i've been with white i've been with you know i was just out there mixing me and mingling i didn't care i was having a good okay. time men are all the same Really? They all the same. The Did only thing is I met a very oh, her phone froze, Lord. Hold on guys. Her phone froze. We're gonna see what happens to her and she won't come back or not. 
Let's see. If you have questions, go ahead and log and um, type them in the comments, and then we'll get to them. Her phone froze. Okay, hold on. Type your questions. I know it was getting good. I know, right? Hold on. I clicked her, so she's. We should be, oh. oh, I don't know what happened. It just booted me out. It's okay. All right. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I did meet a nice Hispanic guy. He was so sweet. And if I, I sometimes I think bad, I'm like, damn, he was really a sweet guy to me. But I don't think we could have been compatible because I'm like, I'm a black girl. Like, and you Hispanic, and I don't know if I fit into your world, and you nerdy, and I'm, I like listening to future and trap music and stuff like that. You know, we, we come from two different worlds. So do do you find, or have you found that other um, races of men are more accepting or willing yes, to like I'll say that open? Much. More accepting. Okay. More accepting. White men and Hispanic men tend to be a lot more open and accepting, and they don't care. They they're they're willing to step out there. Black men is a lot harder. A lot harder. It's a lot harder. Like my boyfriend I'm with now, he's black. Um, but again, he comes from the south. So <laughs> it's it's hard. He, he you know, his people are religious, so it's yeah. it's religion dictates a whole lot. <laughs> that, look, don't I know as someone who talks about sex all the time, uh religion uh takes it's, it's it's a big thing to um get over in the south because we're it's been so rooted embedded in us for so many years yes oh my god like geez everything is based on religion and i just what i like though when i walk on my campus as a college student it's just like the new millennials are just like especially the black ones are just like they are so free-spirited they get back to the roots they want to know who we are where we come from and they're not just set on okay Somebody told me that a white Jesus in the sky is right. all, end all, be all. You know, right. they have the openness to want to do their own research and learn. Um, one of the questions in the, um, in the viewers says, what about the ages of the band? Like, what, what is your age range? Of um, so, mm, I'm 29. My boyfriend is about, I ain't going to put out his age, but he's a little bit over seven eight years older than me okay so it's a big age gap between us both but i don't it doesn't bother me the youngest i will go probably 25 that's about it because once you start to mess with the 23 year olds and 20 year olds then you become a sugar mama you take care of them and i can't listen i'm expensive i ain't taking care of no young ass little boys <laughs> i have a i gotta pay my rent i got big <laughs> i like my hair done I got, <laughs> No, no, you gonna take care of me. I ain't take care of you. I can't do it. So let's talk about let's talk about sex for let's, let's go let's talk about sex for a little bit. <laughs> okay, and if, if we gonna if we can change the topic anytime. It's fine. Oh, well, she said she said. Do you find that older men are more accepting? Is it like older men? Yeah, because usually when they get to that age, it's like they don't have anything else to prove. Okay, they just, they've been through it all. They've done it all, and it's just like okay, you know. Now listen, we're not gonna say that they don't play no games. Cause they do. <laughs> Google say men don't mature until they're forty three. I believe it. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> you know you still got to deal with the things that come with it, with it all. But older men tend to be a little bit more accepted because they have a lot more experience, and it's just like, okay, I don't have nothing else to prove. I've had all my fun. This is where I'm at, and this is what I want to do. Okay. So you said you have not had your surgery yet, correct? No. Mm -mm. Oh, okay, so you're going to get your surgery. So how how so how is well? I guess I guess describe sex. Like so how how sex how is amazing, it? child. <laughs> sex is fine, honey. <laughs> um, <laughs> sex. Okay, so listen, y'all. I'm going to get a little bit graphic. I, I listen. I'm going to keep it real. I'm just honest like that. I still have my parts. I, they, you know, 
I'm a big fan of oral sex, giving and receiving. Thanks. And men tend, every man that I've dated has given me head and they enjoy it. And that's what they, you know, they want because they know I'm a trans girl and they know that I have that part. And they, they like that, you know. So do so, so on that. So do you think once she removed that part, do you think some of the thrills going to be gone? It is, it does. Then they don't look at you the same anymore. It's just like, okay, you got a, you got a pussy. Right. <laughs> and they can, and I guess like, I, I saw, I was watching Pose. Yeah, it, that's exactly Season the scenario. One, yes. So in Pose, the girl, she, the one, she wanted to be a woman, wanted to rid the penis. And yeah. he was like, don't do that. And then when he did, she, when she did that, he was like, um, you know, like the, my, my whole point in being with you was because you had the boobs like a woman, exactly. but you had the penis, and mm -hmm. so you got rid of the penis. So like the thrill song, I can get pussy anywhere. Exactly. So Very right. Much. So so for you, all right, so you said you're going to remove your penis. So well, okay, I I battle with myself every day about this. I don't. I'm okay. not sure. That's a super expensive surgery, and then on top of that. What if I get a vagina and my vagina don't work? Like my vagina, because they have to rewire your nerves. What if I have a pussy and my pussy don't have no feeling? <laughs> then I'm gonna be like, uh, uh, that's a question. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I have no broken pussy. Like, <laughs> whole I got a pretty pussy, but it don't uh, got no feeling. Like, <laughs> so, that's, that's a question. That that's a that's that's food for thought. I didn't. But I didn't think on the this. other hand, having a vagina it makes it easier for me to dress like I don't have to worry about tucking I don't have to worry about making sure nothing slips up or come out because one thing about me I'm super anal about making sure that you see no print like we're not doing that we're not going out in public you're not seeing no prints honey this thing is super duper flat flat you're gonna wonder if I even have one <laughs> have that thing tucked so tight okay <laughs> too, too flat flat I can't <laughs> listen my friend like, yo where is it Gone. So, so how do you, now I'm curious. So how so how do you, how do you took so it's so smooth? Like how does that process work? Because <laughs> I want to know now. Like how you got me in the <laughs> So listen. Um. Okay. So how do I tuck? Okay. So you have you can use duct tape. That's the old fashioned way is to use duct tape. You okay. got to make sure you shave down there completely hairless, and then you okay. go use duct tape and put it to the back. Tuck that duct tape that thing. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to rip my skin off that. I'm not doing that. I'm just not going to do that. So I think for me, the best option for me is to use a gaff. So a gaff is a, you can make it or you can buy it. And it, it, how I made it was, you know how you have underwear, but the, the spandex band around the underwear, mm -hmm. you cut that off and then you just use like a little, a piece of a sock and you you lay your parts in there. You pull that thing to the back. You put you put your legs between, and that thing stays super flat all day. Now, if I tuck super tight, it is very uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. And after a while, it's just like, okay, can we go? Because I need to um go home and take all this off because this is hurting. And so, and and, and I, I imagine when you go use the bathroom, pee, you just have to. Take I gotta it. take everything and off, thing. and then I gotta pee, and then I gotta put it back on. And you know yeah. that? You no, know, that reminds me. That reminds me of like I, I, I love a good jumpsuit, right? I That's like exactly jumpsuit. how it goes. But I hate jumpsuit because every time I gotta pee, I gotta get naked in the public, <laughs> and I just, I just don't like it. But I love that. That's jumpsuit. very much how it goes. That's yeah, how it goes. Like, oh, exactly how it goes. <laughs> So a question here is, so it says, are you dominant or submissive? I am a cross dresser Ooh. and identify as submissive. Am I dominant or submissive? So, <clears throat> okay. Oh, okay, so I am a little bit of both. Like, I, I, I'm a freak. I'm, I'm, I'm nasty. Like, I, I, I like sex. Sex is good. And if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Like, you're going to fuck me. You're going to give me what I want. And you gonna, we're going to push the limits. I'm going to tell you how I want it. And you're going to give it to me how I want it. But then again, I might want to dominate you. When I say dominate, I mean like dominate your style. I'm not when I, I'm not topping you. So that would mean me, me using my penis on a man. Mm -hmm. I'm just not into that. The most he'll get is for me to get on top of his face and destroy okay. his throat. That's okay. what he'll get. But I'm not sticking my penis inside of him. Okay. <laughs> but I'll dominate him. 
I have had men who have had foot fetish and they like to suck my toes and for me to treat them like some kind of animal beat them and you know it was it was very interesting when I first got involved I was just like okay maybe I am a little wild because I didn't think that I had that any that I could push myself to that limit but it was just like he made me feel so comfortable that I was like okay I could just I, maybe I could take on this role just for this moment but I I could not do it again after that because I was just I was like okay this is a little bit alive this I can't we're not gonna be doing this every time I'm slapping you spitting on you like really degrading you because that's what you like I I'm not into that <laughs> okay yeah <clears throat> so this is a good question um so, so the question is so does that make the man you date gay and, and so and so uh, let me let me reword it um mm -hmm. so I think a lot of people assume um with trans men trans women like so if you you are a trans woman so why don't you just date gay men but gay men, gay men are not understanding want a man who looks like a man right yeah. right now there are some gay men now i've come across a lot of gay men who i didn't think were attracted to trans women and they'll tell me i did not know i was going to be attracted to you but i am so attracted to you because of who you are your femininity or how i look and it just shocks me because I'm like, but you like gay men and I'm I don't look like a gay man, so I don't know how this gonna work, but they are. Okay. But uh, nine times out of ten gay men are not looking for a trans woman. They're not trying to date yeah. no trans woman. They want a man, whether masculine or feminine, but they want a man. A man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's what I have found too, that they want they want a man. They mm -hmm. they want the man. Um see so what should people avoid doing or saying to a transgender person so when I first transitioned at my job see I've been working at my job for five years and the biggest issue that I used to have was they you they were used to who I was so the whole name my name is legally changed to Chanel and they had to get with the program of okay I have to call her Chanel they were they were slipping up calling me by my old name and I was checking them like we about to fight in the street because it was just like, how many times do I have to tell you that my name's Chanel and you keep calling me something else and you keep saying he and him and sir. <laughs> now is you doing it out of spite. <clears throat> and it was annoying because it takes nothing to just be respectful and call somebody by their name. If you don't want to call me a female, you ain't got to call me a female. Just call me by my name. My name is Chanel. That's it. And like with my cousin, I have, okay, yeah, so I had a cousin, I have two cousins. And one of my cousins, um, name they're, well, they're both name changed but the, um it was it wasn't that i i'll speak for myself it wasn't that i was trying to be disrespectful it was just my whole life i've known you as tom right yeah and so mm -hmm. it was it was a it was a, I, I literally when i saw that person i had to like mentally like okay i'll be about to say tom like well dang that's not tom that's tina like I, I, it was yeah, it, it yeah. Just took a while for me it's, to it's be a able, process it's a transition how, what I learned in therapy, it's a transition for everybody around you. Yeah. It's a transition for me because I'm going from male to female. It's a transition from you because you are now have to get adjusted to this new human being and this new personality. And I can tell you right now, I'm totally different from my prior self. I'm this two totally different human beings. I'm outspoken. I'm very over the top. Like, I like to have fun. I'm the, the party girl. I like to have a good time. My old self, I was very shy, very timid. I didn't do it. I was like low key. I was in a cut because I wasn't comfortable with myself. Okay. I wasn't happy. I wasn't, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't like what I saw. I was like, okay, I'm walking around. I'm, I'm a boy, but that's not who I am. So describe the first time where you actually, like, after your training, felt like a woman. Like you're like, okay, like this is this is, this is truly who I am. So last, it was, okay, so my transition, this November makes three years. Okay. So it's been, this it's two years and some months right now. Um, I think last year, it was year two, April, and I went to a Pride event, and I wore a two-piece bikini. Mm -hmm. And the way this body was set up. And the way that I was looking and the response that I was getting, the way the boys was running me down the block. Like, okay. This is real. This, you know, this ain't this ain't a little boy. This is this is a grown ass woman right now. This ain't a play play. This is real. 
they were like people I went to school with, people that I knew growing up, people that knew me at work. They had to, you know, it was like, okay, they looking at me in a different light because there is not that person who they used to see. I don't even look like that person anymore at all. Okay. And so, well, I think one of the big points was I had somebody at my job say, I now that I see you in actuality, I can't even remember who that other person was. I, mm. I, I can't. My cousins who I grew with, up with my whole life are like, I don't even remember that person because that's that's not even you. And it's only been two and a half years going on three. So, so yeah, so you're definitely like in this is definitely your, you know, your this is what you're meant to Yeah, be. this is who I am, yeah. Um, so what do you think the world can do in general, like to make trans people in general feel more comfortable? I think we just got to learn how to live and coexist and be respectful to one another and just love on one another and just whatever you don't understand, try to ask questions and not assume, not assume because I may assume that you understand me as a woman, but you might not because your your experience is probably different from mine, even though we're both women. You may, I, I may assume like, girl, you know how that goes and you may not even know. Right. what it is like so i think we just got to get to a point where we stop assuming stop speaking without thinking and just honestly make a conscious effort to just try to understand one another and coexist we don't have to like each other but we gotta co coexist and respect each other like you know i mm -hmm. feel like like i said last week when i had the, the um the dude on who was the diaper baby i was like you know i'm after this interview i'm probably am not going to go buy any diapers and wear them however you know i can respect this is what you're into and it's what you want to do i don't necessarily have to be something that that's my thing but i can no, respect you for it being your thing and you know and asking questions like well my cousin like i sit down and ask her a whole lot of questions when i'm like okay so why you want to do this like you know explain to me you know all these things like, i was just curious and i wanted to have a better understanding mm -hmm. of what it was or you know why they chose this right path. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and which is understandable because transgender people people think that we have this like it's just this like I was telling my boyfriend one night, like the, the topic of Nipsey Hussle. So Nipsey Hussle, before he died, he made a comment that the black community <laughs> is being like black men are going through demasculization because gay people are with this agenda to take down the black community and all of this. And I was just like, this we are not an agenda. Like we are actually living our lives, living out our experience. Is nobody is paying us to be this way. We are who we are. If you had to make a choice, if I had to make a choice on if I wanted to be a trans woman or I wanted to be a biological woman, I would want to be a biological woman because I feel like the things that I have to go through as a trans woman are just so heartbreaking. And I would never want to have to go through that. Who would want to have to go through being put down, talked about, treated like garbage? trash and you have to still pick yourself up and still be this very vibrant young lady despite the facts so how are you able to do that how how are you able to be so positive and not be like this fuck it and <laughs> <laughs> um i think because i I'm, I'm so happy now that i'm living in my truth that it's just okay. like irregardless of what i go through i'm just like you know at the end of the day i'm still chanel and i'm a, I'm a badass bitch and you know it's, 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 i just keep those affirmations like i'm good enough okay. I'm, I'm no matter what goes on i'm gonna be all right i'm gonna survive this i'm gonna get through this and i just you just gotta push through i've had so, to i was in survival mode for so long when right. i transitioned that now i'm just like so thorough so another question here says, so how, so I know a lot of trans women are into sex work. How uh -huh. do relationships coexist with that? Um, you, you get with a guy and you let him know what it is. And if he respects it, then y'all do what y'all do. And if he don't respect it, then he can go. There's always more out there. There's always more dudes out there. And they love trans girls. They, they that ain't gonna ever stop. So, if one dude say that, oh, he don't want to be with a trans girl because she's an escort. Well, that's your loss, baby. I mean, go get you another girl who's secretary. I don't know. 
I posted on my um. This is, it it, it kind of goes with the situation. I posted on my Instagram the other day about you know one one dude's I don't eat booty is is you know spelled backwards. Is your home? Because you gonna eat this booty. So <laughs> <laughs> what the next man wants, somebody will. Yeah, you're gonna eat this butt. I don't right. care about none of that. It's somebody who wants it, honey. It's somebody who's gonna do it, but you don't want to do somebody exactly. who will. Um, you will. <laughs> uh, next question says, you stated you go to therapy. And that is that mandated before surgery, or is it only for minors? So if you're not doing black market transitioning, meaning like you're going through the black market, buying your hormones online, and just transitioning by yourself. If you're going to go through doctors and they're going to make you go get diagnosed. So I was diagnosed with gender dysphoria, meaning you are not, you don't agree. You, who you are doesn't correlate with who you look like. And it's, it's something that needs to be fixed. So you transition, you get on hormones. And a part of that, you go to a therapist who has to diagnose you. Yeah. So <clears throat> why, why do people do, and I, why don't people do black market way versus going? Because black trans girls don't have medical insurance. Black women tend to not have medical insurance. Okay. Black people tend to not have medical insurance. Yeah. You know, and even and then if we do have medical insurance, thank God that I do, it's a matter of finding a provider. Somebody who can who understands a trans patient. Because I can go to a regular doctor, but if he doesn't know about my hormone level, he doesn't understand the medications that I'm on, estradiol or spironolactone. What am I going to you for? Like that dictates a whole lot of my bodily function. It changes. Okay, yeah. My so, levels so, are different. So how did you how did you find your doctor? So oh. how it's my it's my was interested in in transition. How will they go about finding the right doctor? I got on the internet. And I went to this website. I think it was like Trans MD. I have to. I, I don't quote me. It's. Uh, okay. I got online, and I was like, I'm, I need to find. I did my research. Like I got on YouTube, and the girls was like, they went to a therapist, and then they went to a doctor. So I was like, okay, I need to go to a therapist, or I need to go to an endocrinologist. So I called UM Hospital, and I was just like, I need to see an endocrinologist because I know they deal with hormones. And I was like, I want to transition because that hospital has a specific department specialized for trans health. So they was like, okay, this is what you do. They set me up with the endocrinologist. I went to him. And then after that, I went to the therapist. And then, and then we here. Okay. I see a lot of questions. And Lord, I hope I can answer them all. I'm, I'm going through and answer them. So he said, um, when you get with a trade man, although you identify as male and with having penis do, you tell them up front to protect yourself. So do you well, tell them you, them? Okay, so you have to, you got to, in my, our words, me and my good sister Lana, you got to spill your tea. You got you to gotta tell trade your tea because that'll cost you your life. Okay. If you don't tell these men that you are trained and you playing this game, girl, you can end up dead. Yes. You got to give people a choice. I agree with that. If he does not want to be with you because you are trans, you need to go, <clears throat> trust me, there's a lot of men out there that will be with you because you are trans. Do not go and date somebody and think that you're going to lie to them because eventually, if you've never had your bottom surgery, he's going to find out. Yeah. And when he wants to be intimate with you, you can't keep not being intimate with him. He won't doing that. <clears throat> so is there like a dating site for trans individuals? They do have dating apps for trans women. Um... Or you could just go on regular dating apps and you put in your profile. I'm transition. I'm I'm transgender, and that's what I did. I I got on Tinder. And I put on there that I'm transgender, and they still hollered at me. It was no problem. It's just like okay, I kept it real from the jump. And okay, I can I can see that. Mm -hmm. So, what is the one? What is the biggest misconception people have in regards to transgender individuals? Oh, misconception. Um, that we're here to try to. Uh, so, I'm gonna say this, and I don't want to offend you. Okay. Black women tend to think that we're trying to steal their womanhood. We're trying mm -hmm. to steal their men, mm -hmm. and that's a misconception. We don't. We can't steal a human being. This is ain't, this is not slavery, but we can't take, <laughs> steal a man. That's true. He gotta go with me. And a man is gonna get up and do what he wanna yeah. do. If True. he's attracted to me and he's attracted to you, he ain't going to treat me no better than you, sis. 
He, I'm going to tell you this right now. We're going to go through the same things with his trifling ass. <laughs> it's going to be the same thing. Ain't no oh, only thing different. You may not know about me, and nine times out of ten, I might know about you because they tend to be honest with us about being in relationships. They may say, "Yes, I am. I do have a girlfriend," or "Yes, I am married," or "Yes, I am." And one of the downfall for some trans girls, and I was there, is that we accept these men as they are. They okay. may be in relationships. They may be married because it's hard to date. It's hard to find somebody to want you. So you just out there like, okay, whatever. You got a chick, okay. Yeah, but it's not cool. Yeah, and I mean, and, I and, think... that, and that's with people who are who are trans, either just people, women who are born women, mm -hmm. um, who you know for whatever reason they just feel like they just okay with being the side chick or whatever because you no, know, he loves me, whatever. So they accept that, and yeah. as a person, and that's a terrible thing to do. That's it a is. terrible thing. If you're gonna be a side chick, please don't do that. It's a that's gonna fuck up your self esteem. You're gonna be full of hatred and resentment. You gonna it's not good for you. It's not okay. So one question says, so without the surgery, what mm -hmm. is the difference between transgendered and cross dressing? Well, cross dressers are well, I guess drag queens, we will probably yeah. call it a cross dresser. Right. They perform. They dress up and they perform and they get paid. I don't get paid to do this. This is my life. Every yeah. single day I get up, my ID says Chanel, my social security card says Chanel, my birth certificate says Chanel. Where my is like, work RuPaul, bag, like RuPaul is a man who dresses a woman. So Yeah, he, and he'll tell you, I only dress up when I'm going to get paid. I don't get paid for this. Okay. Every day of my life, I'm a woman. I get up, I go to work, I go to school, I go out in public. I'm a woman. This I don't turn it. I don't get a chance to turn it off because today's been a bad day. I don't get a chance to turn it off because... I didn't like what somebody said to me. I'm a woman every single day, every moment of my life. Okay, I can see that. Were Were you before before you trans transition? Were you in, <laughs> Were you into like um drag queen? Were, were you a drag queen? Oh, I love a good drag queen because I like a good performance. They okay. can perform the hell out of a stage. You know, I don't have a problem with that. I love RuPaul. RuPaul is one of the greatest to ever do it, but. Me and RuPaul are not the same people. RuPaul okay. takes off his clothes and he has a bald head and he has a husband and he looked, he said he's a man. Yeah. I take my makeup off. I'm a woman. I'm soft and I'm cunt. Like I got boobs. I got breasts. Like I, you know, I'm, I'm my boyfriend's woman. It's not like he's laying with the man. Next question. So, you know, mm -hmm. I know, you know, uh, Maddie, uh, Maddie. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Madison, yeah. Um, I like Madison. Madison calls herself she is a transsexual. Now, is there a difference between transsexual and transgender? Trans. She's older than me, so I, back in their day, they used to say transsexual, and okay. it wasn't offensive. I just don't call myself transsexual because it, the connotation behind it, like it's like a prostitute in my eyes, and I okay. just I'm not, a, I'm not a prostitute, so I'm transgender. Okay. And one of the things that my sister used to tell me was. Why you keep saying you transition? You a woman. You are a woman. Like, why do you feel like you have to different put a difference on it? And I was like, well, just to specify. But in all actuality, like she said, at the end of the day, I'm a woman. Right. That's true. Um. So, what? Who are your role models? Your trans role My models? Role. So I did when I first transitioned. I really didn't have no role models. I, I didn't know who to look up to because growing up I didn't have nobody I didn't know nobody trans I didn't I wasn't hanging out in the gay community like that so I didn't know anybody and so I just knew that I wanted to transition I knew that I wanted to be the woman that I am today but I didn't know I just knew women that I look women that I looked up to like I love little Kim oh my god she made me feel beautiful for being a dark skinned girl like I just I, I adored everything about little Kim and Naomi Campbell, my mom, my, my biggest influence is my mom. I will watch my mom get ready in the mirror and she will have this glow to her and she will just be so like, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to let these hoes have it. And I just <laughs> knew, like, she would literally say that in the mirror. And I was like, I want to be, that's, that's the kind of, like, I know that I'm going to be that kind of girl. <laughs> that <laughs> girl to be. <laughs> and my mama was just very much like, my mom's name is Beauty. That's her name. And Life of the Party. 
the girl that always kept her hair done, nails done, jewelry, just like that beautiful chick. And I just was like, I want to be just like my mama. Like, that's that's what I want to be like. So I think my mom was my biggest influence. So do you rap? Because someone said, when can we get an EP? So oh, me. God. <laughs> Who wrote that? Get out the comments. Hot man, get out. Who, you rap Chanel? <laughs> Get out the like comments. That. I know who that is, and I told him. <laughs> Get out the comments, Ronald. You rap? <sighs> Why did he have to come in here and say that? You rap to them? What, what can we hear your music, child? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I, are you on, uh, are you, are you on uh, SoundCloud? Mm -mm, I'm not telling y'all nothing. Uh-uh. That's <laughs> Listen. I told him if I met me a man who did music, then I will put out music again. I haven't put out music in probably like four or five years, and I don't know if I'm ever going to do it again. It's something that I great at. I'm a natural writer. I can do it without practice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. If, if, if my boyfriend ever get himself a studio, then you might get a track from me. <laughs> but outside of that, I don't, I don't know. Mm, no. Mm. So, uh, uh huh. So, uh, Instagram after this thing shuts off automatically in an hour. Okay. So, in closing, mm. I want you to tell the people um, one thing that you want people to take away from your experience or learn, and then tell us where we can follow you on social media. Okay. So, I guess, all right, let me see. One thing I could say is, um, like I said, just be respectful. And whatever you don't understand, do your research. YouTube and Google are very informative. Okay. It's so many of us on the internet. There's so many trans girls. You got Amaya Scott. You got Cherry Boom. You have me. You have all these other girls out there. There's so many of us. Get to know us. Understand who we are. And then you'll understand our transition. You'll understand our womanhood. But don't go on this bashing spree because you don't know or you don't understand and you think that we're here to steal. We're not here to take anything from you. Right. We're not here to take your womanhood away from you. We're not trying to invade your space. We just want to be included. Right. We just want to be accepted. Mm -hmm. We want to be on the same front line with y'all. That's it. We want to be loved like y'all want to be loved. We don't and you love. should be. And that's it. You know, at the end of the day, we just want to be loved on and by a good man and get some money. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little dope, y'all, honey. Shit. You know, we just got a little bit of money. And get some good money. No, no y'all. So, where can we find you at on social media? I can't. You're. I, I can't hear you. Went mute. Say it again, because I can't hear you. Went mute. Your sound went out. Can't hear me. I don't know what to, I don't know what happened to the sound. Hold on. Okay, so we are going to end it.